Well, good morning, church. I hope you guys are staying safe and warm at home. As you can see, we're not going to have the production quality that we normally would expect through our live stream, um, but this is the best I can do. So I I'm still glad that we have an opportunity to gather and to look into God's Word together as a church. I actually, all week long, I was kind of struck by this text and, and what it meant for us. And I, honestly, this is a really fitting time for us to walk through the verses that we're going to walk through today. When I was a young man, um, especially around 7th and 8th grade, I was doing anything but following after Christ. As a matter of fact, I think my parents talk about that season as a time where if they said one thing, I was going to do the opposite. And in my own heart, I didn't realize that I was rebelling against God and just trying to make my own way. Uh, but that's exactly what was happening. Um, about my freshman year of high school, God began a profound work in my heart. Um, but God didn't do that in a vacuum. I went to a, a couple of services. That's where God began this work. But in the midst of that time where God began working in me, he sent some men into my life. Now, I had godly parents who had guided me my entire life. But for whatever reason, I just couldn't hear. I just couldn't listen and understand what they were trying to tell me. And so God brought some very godly men and women into my life. They, um, they loved me, and I was convinced of that. And uh, they took time just to spend with me to invest into me and into my life. And I, I sit here today, and I've got to tell you that I'm eternally grateful for men and women who, who love me, and who would just take the time to invest in my life. They did not teach um, extravagant lessons every time we got together. They didn't, like, you know, have these really articulate prayers, uh, again, when we would uh, spend time together, when they would be pouring into my life. Um, they just shared their lives with me. They expressed a uh, real, like, genuine concern for me and my well-being, and they took the time to help me walk through uh, the things that were going on in my life. I think that our, in our culture, we often dramatically overestimate um, giftedness and ability and charisma and think, well, those are the people who are going to be used by God. But today, I want to challenge you in what I, I consider um, average, ordinary obedience. Uh, today, Paul's going to tell us about a couple of guys, Timothy and Epaphroditus, who when you hear what they were actually doing, you are not going to be impressed. But when you see how highly Paul commends them, you see how God ultimately used them in the church at Philippi, uh, you'll see that sometimes it's not the big and the flashy things. It's not the, the, the giftedness or the super talent that, that it, what God, is what God uses, but instead oftentimes he just will, uses willing people who are, uh, have hearts of genuine love for other people. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to uh, Philippians chapter 2. We're going to begin in verse 19. We're actually going to read through verse 30, but right now I just want to read five verses for you out of uh, Philippians chapter 2. Here's what Paul says. He says, But I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, so that I, um, I also may be encouraged when I learn of your condition. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare. For they all seek after their own interests, not those of Christ Jesus. But you know of his proven worth, that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his father. Therefore, I hope to send him immediately as soon as I see how things go with me. And I trust in the Lord that I myself also will be coming shortly. Now, in that short section of text, Paul commends Timothy rather highly. He, he says about him, I have no one else of kindred spirit. He goes on to talk about the other people who were with him in Rome. These are likely uh, the men and women who would have preached the gospel out of ambition and rivalry, uh, seeking to stir up trouble for Paul. And so Paul, he's imprisoned in Rome. He's celebrating that he gets to share the gospel. He's celebrating that the gospel is being shared across the city. And yet, as he looks out, he sees a deficit of something that is so critical for us in the Christian life. As he looks out, he says, only in Timothy do I find genuine concern for other people. He says of, of most people there, they all seek after their own interests and not those of Christ Jesus. Now, this is really interesting that what Paul says here 
is these people who are obsessed with looking out for their own interests, they are not looking out for the interests of Christ Jesus. The thing that, that God cares about, the thing that stirs the heart of Jesus, the thing that concerns him, that he's interested in, was not the well-being of himself, but it was the well-being of others. When we're only looking out for ourselves, only caring about what's going on in our lives, making sure things are good with us and ours, if you will, uh, we are not looking after the interest of Christ Jesus. Instead, we're doing the work of those that Paul says, uh, hey, they're, they're not genuine concern for anybody else. They're only thinking about themselves. So in this text, we don't see that P Timothy is going to go on and preach powerfully. Um, we don't see that Timothy is going to go do this thing like a day of Pentecost kind of work where thousands are going to get saved. Paul is delighted and eager to send Timothy to the believers in Philippi, um, not because of any particular giftedness, but because Timothy was the only one that Paul could find who had genuine concern for their well-being, that he had cared about what was going on in the church elsewhere and really what was going on in the broader world. So Timothy, if he had any unique quality, he was a man of uncommon concern. He was a man who, unlike most people around him, he genuinely loved other people. He, he thought about them. He cared about their lives and what was going on. Now, <clears throat> I said this message is a little bit timely for us because most of us are going to be holed up in our houses trying to stay safe and warm during this time. But could I just encourage you, as the Church of Jesus Christ today, that you would have the interest of Christ at heart, that you would look out and say, hey, who might be in need today? Um, how are my neighbors doing? Would you take this time to, to call and check on your neighbors? Is there anything I can do for you that you would express care and concern for them? Interestingly enough, uh, of all the things that, that Paul could tell us that the world is going to notice about us, um, that they might recognize that you know we're Christians and we read the Bible a lot, or we spend a lot of times a lot of time praying. Uh, the scriptures tell us that the world is going to recognize us as disciples of Jesus Christ by the love that we demonstrate one for another. So today, I just want to encourage you in your home. You may have to do it via text message. You may have to be old school and dial someone's phone, uh, uh, their actual phone, like make a call to them, and you might just you know get out in the snow. Uh, take a walk, like spend some time playing, but then go and check on your neighbor. Say, hey, is there anything I can do for you today? I just want you to know that, hey, we might not talk a lot. We, we live close to each other, um, but I, I care for you, and, and I want to serve you in this way. In doing so, it's, it's average. It's ordinary obedience. It doesn't look profound. It's not overwhelming, but those are the sorts of things that God uses for us to serve our community well. So can I encourage you today to be like Timothy, to have a heart of concern, for other people. But that's not that's not all. Uh, we're also going to see this man, Epaphroditus. Now, Epaphroditus was from uh, really kind of a godless home. It's likely uh, he was named after Aphrodite, and so he was raised in a pagan home, and he was a convert to Christianity. Now, Epaphroditus is, is not anyone that we know much about at all, but Paul is going to commend him very highly. He's, he's going to say this about him in, in the verses we're going to read in just a second. He calls him a brother, a fellow worker, a soldier, a messenger, a minister in time and need. And just as he's commended Timothy as the only one of kindred spirit who's genuinely concerned, now we see that Paul is commending Epaphroditus, brother, fellow worker, soldier, messenger, minister in time and need. He tells the Philippian believers to rejoice or to receive Epaphroditus with joy and to hold men like him in high regard. So what was it that Epaphroditus did for Paul to commend him so highly to the Philippian believers? Well, we know, we're going to see in the text in just a second, that Epaphroditus had delivered a monetary gift to Paul while he was in Rome. If you look, uh, fast forward to chapter 4, verse 18, you'll see that gift described a little more fully. And so Epaphroditus was a guy who was simply willing. Now, just to be clear, the distance between um, Philippi and Rome was fairly significant. Now, depending on upon the route he took, and it's likely Epaphroditus walked this, so he probably went some 1,100 miles. It would have taken him almost three weeks to walk on foot, carrying this precious money that Paul needed to continue his ministry. 
And so it would have been dangerous in some ways. Now, again, Epaphroditus, he doesn't, we don't see him preaching. We don't see him doing a lot other than caring for Paul. Uh, but God used him in a profound way. Paul looks at him and says, this is a man that you need to honor highly. Like you should think about Epaphroditus and you should regard him highly in your midst. What did he do? He was willing to serve when the opportunity presented itself. Let me read the text to you here. Verse 25, Paul says, But I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my fellow brother and fellow worker, and fellow soldier who is also your messenger and minister to my need, because he was longing for you all and, and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed, he was sick to the point of death. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also upon me, so that I would not have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I have sent him all the more eagerly, so that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and that I may be less concerned about you. Receive him then in the Lord with all joy, and hold men like him in high regard, because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was deficient in your service to me. So Epaphroditus, who was just simply willing to serve when the opportunity presented itself, who didn't look and wait for somebody else to do it, but instead he, he said when it was time to send the gift from Philippi to Paul to care for his needs in Rome, he's like, hey, I'll do it. And to be honest with you, things didn't go especially well for Epaphroditus. It's likely that he got sick somewhere on his journey. It could have happened while he was in Rome tending to Paul, uh, but he was gravely ill. Like They thought he might die. And so it wasn't like the uh, the easiest assignment ever. It wasn't that things necessarily went well. I, I remember uh, I, I spoke to you a few weeks ago and talked about the missionary who said, don't call yourself a servant and then expect to not be treated like one. That oftentimes we think when we serve that God ought to make everything go perfectly for us, like everyone ought to be praising us and thanking us. And, and let me just say that when we're, we set ourselves aside and say, God, uh, because you're worthy, I want to be a willing servant. Because I want to conduct myself in a manner worthy of the gospel, I want to serve other people. Let me just warn you on the front end. It may not be received well. As you go to your neighbors today, you call your friends, you check on elderly people who may need you today, uh, it may not go well. People may not show the gratitude that they ought to show for what you're going to do. As you care for them or shovel driveways or whatever it might be, you may not receive the treatment that you're due. But then we remember Jesus, who didn't receive good treatment. He was perfect in all of his ways. He was completely sinless and yet falsely accused, abandoned by his friends. He was mocked. He was beaten. He was crucified because he came to serve the world. And so as followers of Jesus, we should expect things to be difficult at times. But I want to encourage you today. I don't want you to think it's all going to be bad. I want you to see that God uses these little tiny um, ordinary acts just simply having concern for other people, a heart that looks beyond you and your family, looks out to the world and says, hey, I, I'm not here to be served, but I'm, I'm here to be a servant, someone who shows genuine concern for other people and who's willing to step up and just offer yourself in willing service to other people. I don't believe we could ever imagine what God could do through a church full of men and women and kids who just raise your hand and say, God, it's not about my giftedness. It's not about my super charisma or the fact that I'm the smartest person in the room. But God, what I am is I'm willing to serve other people as you serve me. God, I want to love other people as you have loved me. And then we just pray the prayer together. God, would you use us to serve our community, to be light in the midst of darkness? Would you use us in this particular time? Today, we were going to take communion together as a body. We'll, we'll do that next week. We were going to share this time and really just remember the work that Jesus Christ had done for us as we look forward to serving other people today. Now, again, it's hard to do communion from a distance, but can I just encourage you today to, to grab your spouse, to gather up your kids, and to talk through the work of Jesus Christ, um, what he's done for us, that Jesus, he suffered for us. Jesus was willing to step down out of heaven for us, we who were lost, who were separated from God, that Jesus was willing to endure the punishment of guilty men and women, that we might find life, that Jesus was the ultimate servant, that he loves us in ways that we could never fully 
comprehend. Would you just take some time today to talk through that with your family? I want you to know I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful uh, day today, some time to get to spend with your family. I hope you stay, stay safe and warm.